little talk is about how a structure in the mind is made. Uh, structures are buildings. You build castles in the air. You build structures of ideas uh, in the, the, the method of programming that's used on the public. It sometimes takes generations to build a structure, an idea. George Bush Sr. referred to this as the big idea when he talked about a, a new world order coming into view. Part of that was true. It was the end of, of a so-called Cold War system and the beginning of the next world empire that takes over. Uh, which have been discussed in many books, mainly in Britain, for as far back as the 70s. But a big idea is a Masonic term. Um, it's not just a vision, it's a big idea. And of course, like all big ideas, you must first plant the seed. Before you can plant the seed, you've got to get the soil ready. And the seed will then germinate in the soil. That's called the preparatory work. The technique that's used on the public is as old as can be, old as mankind himself. And you'll find in Plato's Republic, he talks about a, the ideal world utopian society run by a dominant minority called the Guardians, that they used all of the techniques of culture creation. And culture creation is done by drama, primarily, and symbolism, paintings, architecture. It puts ideas across to people. And in drama, the onlookers actually emulate what they see. Uh, the acting societies prefer to see they reflect society. But amongst themselves, they admit they help create culture, alter culture, and direct culture. That's the job of the culture creators. And again, going back to Plato, he also talked about music. And that music was what such a powerful, powerful force for directing the minds of the young. This technique has never been used to its full effect as it is today. It is so powerful that Plato actually talked about licensing musicians because of the effect it could have on the youth. And he knew that too because he had followed uh, Socrates. Socrates had to drink the hemlock because Socrates was secretly teaching the youth, the aristocratic youth, uh, into the mysteries. And he was teaching them that one day they could rebel and bring in a new type of utopian order. The same as Pythagoras had done long before. So people basically are downloaded by entertainment into the ways that they will adopt and behave with ideas uh, music, fashion, everything goes together to create culture. Uh, poetry, of course, was big in the 1800s. And then radio and television took over big time from then. If you want to plant ideas uh, in a psychological warfare scenario to disengage the public from a reality, you do it again through fiction, through the process of fascinating fiction. And then you take it into a realm of a twilight zone between fiction and reality by mixing the two together. So bits of truth with fantasy, white speculation, and then you build on it, you build the structure, you build the, the, the concept within someone's mind, the builders, the master builders, that's what they mean.
mean by that? And it's done over many years. An idea can take many years and even some generations to fulfill. Hollywood is the holy wood. It's also the real holly, the holly tree, the bush that, that, that you take the rod from, that the magicians always use. You wave the magic wand like little, the little um, Disney character does, and the stars fall from the wand. You cast a spell. And people are under the illusion. Uh, they're in entertainment. Tin is like tin. It means cover. You enter under the cover into the tent of darkness, and then the light is shown, and you are mesmerized. Today, we're going through amazing changes, amazing changes, with aerial spraying all over the world uh, until people are getting used to it. Uh, some people can remember what clouds look like, some cannot. And those who have never looked up before, well, once you point it out to them, they have nothing to compare it to. They think it's always been like that. But we're being dozed like bugs from the air on a, an increasing basis. They've stepped it up big time since people started to notice. So they're hurrying up the process. Meanwhile, uh, even on this website here, there are hundreds of emails coming in from people who are following Anunnaki, uh, reptilian people, uh, the UFOs and space aliens behind it and all this stuff has been put out over generations where, where they were inundated with science fiction and authors specially chosen authors high Masonic connections to mesmerize the public and, and prepare their minds for this counterintelligence uh, process because the time comes during every great plan when enough people are awakened to the plan the, the time always comes when a critical moment and a balance is reached and those who implement the changes to come must counter it that's called counterintelligence you take the intelligence which has been gathered by the small people and you put out superstars to take that intelligence. They are pushed to the very top. They become the leaders. And then they spin it off into outer space. They diffuse it. They, they negate it. They render it harmless, you see. And that's what counterintelligence does. How did we get to a, a stage where so many adults in all walks of life and professions and jobs are so confused that they're chasing Anunnaki and, and reptilian people? How did this happen? How long did it take to prepare the people's minds to bring them to this stage? Middle Ages, the Catholic Church brought in all of the superstitions and fears and ancient terrors of the unconscious mind, the stage, the rising sea of the unconscious, the place where all things can happen and are repressed and kept apart by the subconscious from the conscious mind, the raging sea, where everything can happen, where people will do and see and experience things they would never ever have in their conscious state. 